Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Glad to see all of you here this morning. Uh, we've got several announcements today after church. Well, not, not directly after church, but this afternoon at 3 o'clock, 3.30, the finance team will meet. And then at 4 o'clock, the church ministry council will meet. So if you're not sure whether or not you're on those committees, there's a fold an insert in here with everybody's name on it, so please check that. Next Saturday, we will have a dinner at the church, having fish or chicken with uh, accompanying sides. Uh, be, be aware of that. That's next Saturday at 6 o'clock. Uh, I know Bridget had an announcement. Would you like to go ahead and make yours? gone up to the uh, lectern, but I don't think you'd have been able to see me, so <laughs> um, wanted to say that it's good to be back, and uh, wanted to let you know that we are partnering, going a little bit deeper with Pleasant Grove Elementary School by having a luncheon for them in August, and our treat, um, and we also have two ministries that are attached to that. One will be the opportunity for you to sign up to pray for a teacher or to pray for a Pleasant Grove Elementary School staff person. And that roster or those boards will be going around from Sunday school to Sunday school class and will also be available here in the sanctuary for you to sign up. So you have the opportunity to pray for a person or more than a person for the entire school year this coming year. And on my left is a board of needs for the classrooms. These are things that typically come out of the teacher's own pocket. And we want to try and collect as much as we can of those items to give to them, to present to them, and deliver to the school when they come for the luncheon. So you can come up. This board will be available in the sanctuary for the next two weeks, and you simply sign your name and make a note of the quantity of the item that you're going to bring. If you're going to bring copy paper and you know you're gonna buy a case, then put your name down and put case with it. I hope the board is self-explanatory. But this is an opportunity of us um, having 
some hands-on uh, and a way to partner a little bit deeper with the school uh, beyond Discovery Club and what we're doing there. So if you have any questions about it, uh, just let us know and we'll, we'll help you out with that. Thanks so much. The bulletin this morning is kind of like a big pamphlet or maybe a little booklet, so it's kind of thick. Please go through it and check all the announcements. There's an envelope inserted in the uh, bulletin for your donation to the Gideons. You can put it in the offering plate or you can put it back in the basket in the back in the narthex. I know they would appreciate anything that you could give them. Uh, ordinarily, we would introduce our speaker as just before he speaks, but since I'll be singing in choir, I'll go ahead and briefly introduce David and Jane Jarrett. We're delighted to have them with us this morning. You know, when we had Thomas here from Africa, we thought we had somebody from far away come, come to be with us, but these folks are all the way from Australia. So it, we're, it's really a treat this morning to have them with us, and I'm excited to hear what, what he has to say to us. Um, are there any other announcements from the congregation? But this time we'll have our prelude and bringing in the light. Good morning. How are y'all today? I'm not Miss Lorraine, am I? I'm not the cook. She's not feeling good today, so she called and asked, could I fill in for her? So can y'all, if she's watching, can y'all wave and say, we hope you feel better, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Lorraine? Can y'all tell her that? If she's watching us, no? All right. Well, today, uh, she had a story prepared for y'all, and she sent it for me. And the story comes from Matthew chapter 19, Mark chapter 10 and Luke chapter 18. One day somebody asked, do you think Jesus would pray for our boys and girls? Hmm, do you think he would? Somebody else said yes, I think he would. So down the street they went with their daddies and mommies. Yes ma'am. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so they went down the street with their mommies and daddies and grandpas and grandmas and their toys, and the boys and girls went on their way to see Jesus. Well, Jesus' friends saw them coming, and he says, Whoa, wait a minute. Those friends said, Wait a minute. No, no, no. Don't bring those children to see Jesus. He is way too busy to see these kids. But you know what? When Jesus saw those kids, you know what he said? He said, let those children come to see me. Then he picked up the boys and girls one by one, put them in his arms and hugged them, and he put his hands around them and prayed. And Jesus' friends thought, hmm, Jesus isn't too busy for the boys and girls. He loves them. And after that, their parents took them home. What does this story teach us? What does that story teach us that Jesus says? Huh? 
Say that one more time. No, that's not what it is. Never trust parents. It teaches us that Jesus loves us regardless if we're big, small, little. All right, can we bow our heads? All right, let's all bow our heads. Uh, dear God, all of these children are precious to us. Their smiles light up our lives. I always love them and bless them as you did those children of so very long ago. We ask this in your, your holy name. Amen. And Miss Lorraine something today too as well. Now let's stand and turn to page 158 in the Cokesbury and sing, We've a story to tell to the nation. <coughs>
From there shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. Now, as you're being seated, turn to page 141 in the Cokesbury, and we'll sing The Way of the Cross Leads Home. Heavenly Lord, you have brought us to the beginning of a new day. As the world is renewed fresh and clean, so we ask you to renew our hearts with your strength and purpose. Forgive us the errors of yesterday and bless us to walk closer in your way today. This is the day we begin our lives anew. Shine through us so that every person we meet may feel your presence in our souls. Take our hands, precious Lord, for we cannot make it by ourselves. Through Christ we pray and live, and as we pray as you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
it is absolutely true that there is nothing more powerful, nothing more life-changing than the gospel. When people come and share a testimony of their lives changed, they are filled with just such thanks and joy that they got given one of these little books. Well, I had been an atheist, a very vocal and aggressive one throughout high school. But when I got to year 12, with the pressure of the HSC, uh, I began to question life and its meaning and purpose. I would wake up in the middle of the night, uh, was convinced that the world was going to end, and it was that dreadful fear of death that really drove me to search for answers. The Gideons came to school and I was hostile to the visit. They were taking up my class time and I thought spreading fairy tales amongst the kids. But I must have been touched by what they said somewhere in my soul because I took one of their red testaments and I put it on my shelf and it stayed there for six or seven years untouched. Gideons are all over the world in 197 countries. There's 300,000 and last year over 85 million copies of the Word of God were distributed in 95 languages. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. And I remembered that I had a Gideon's New Testament that I'd been given in Year 7 of Scripture. And uh, out of desperation, I, I grabbed that and I began to read it every night and uh, learning about Jesus. Uh, I trusted him as my saviour in July of 1985. I went through this traumatic period in my life and I thought my life was ruined and beyond repair and I was actually considering suicide. And I said, God, I'm going to believe in you and pray to you for a month and you've got a month to show me the goods. And that's when I took the Gideon's Red Testament home and I thought they were exactly the words I needed someone to say to me, so reassuring, and I thought, is this real? Could God be real? I just instantly understood that Jesus is what everybody is searching for. And here I was, I'd found him. I'd mocked him all my adult life, and yet he yanked me out of this dark place. Well, it's transformed my life completely, from someone that had no hope to someone that has every hope. Uh, I now have a family, a ministry. It's as if you've lived in a dark room for 17 years stumbling about in the dark and someone just turned the light on and everything made sense. Wherever the Word of God is sown, the church truly does reap a harvest. We would love to come and share with pastors and churches all around the country what God is doing today. This is a 21st century ministry. You have a witness there that you probably would receive in no other way. There are people that, like myself, would never have darkened the door of a church and in that sense, I don't know of any other ministry that does what Gideons do. Yes, the Gideons International is the extension of the mission of your church, taking your church into the farthest places of the globe that individuals might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And why do we do this? It's no different, you know, from what you do. Each one of us is called to be a disciple. Each one of us is called in some way to bear fruit. We're going to turn to God's word as we read from John chapter 15. I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and him and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, are thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And as we take a closer look at this reading and begin to relate it to ministry, what is it that we really need to know? 
Firstly, the charge is rather cruel. I'm not a farmer and I'm not a gardener. My wife will tell you that. I can cut grass, but I can't grow things. And yet, here is Jesus saying, if you don't bear fruit, you'll be cut off and cast into the fire. But if you do something, you will be grafted and you'll be enhanced. Some years ago, I was traveling through an area in southern Australia where they grow grapes. And the bunches of grapes were like that, hanging on the vine. And it was a fantastic sight. And it brought into reality to me immediately what this parable was about. Because as we stopped the car and went up close to the vines to take some photographs, you could see where the vine had been pruned and there were dead stumps still as part of the vine, right beside these great big black bunches of grapes. And that is what Jesus is talking about. But you know, verse 16 has to be also read at this same time to really bring home the harvest to us so that we get a clear message from this. Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that wherever you ask, or whatever you ask, the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And if your fruit and my fruit is going to abide, the harvest needs to be sown with the blessing of God. And so there is no use separating ourselves from the vine. We have to remain part so that the sap from the vine, the core of the vine, is able to continually flow into us and it reaches out along the vine. And Christian ministry is exactly the same. We need to be drawing the resource weekly, daily, from the Word of God and enjoying our worship and praise time and allowing God's Holy Spirit to flow into us and strengthen us. And it is with that that the Gideons is a close partnership and a relationship with your church, with the Christian church universal around the world. We are Christian business and professional men drawn together in service with our wives in the evangelical and Protestant churches, reaching into not 198 countries, as the video said, but in the last few months, we reached 200 countries around the world. You probably know from uh, your school days and looking at atlases now, there's about 125, 126 nations around the world. And we're in currently 200 of those on your behalf taking the word of God and placing it into the busy streams of life, placing it into idle hands that individuals might have the opportunity of coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm part of a committee that continues now to look at those other 25 nations. I personally have been given responsibility for Iraq, Afghanistan, Maldives and the Comoros Islands. And you know that mainly those 25 nations are the strong Islamic nations on earth. We have an emerging work in China where we're putting in about a million scriptures a year into China and we're doing it through the local churches with the knowledge and approval of the government. Recently, in a meeting with government officials in China to discuss how we might legally expand this ministry, a government official turned to our leading Gideon in that meeting and said, we like the Gideons International because you teach people how to be Christians through the Bible. And we are finding that the Christians are honest and trusted people. And so there is a bearing of fruit that brings a great responsibility. And so now it puts a different perspective again. It's like not only the trimmed branch, but it's the big and the small on the vine. It's that which is bearing fruit and looks abundant and others, others that are struggling. And it doesn't mean to say that in our times of struggle, we're a long way from God. Some of us struggle when we are as absolutely bound closely with God. And we feel that our ministry and our mission is dry. And we ask God, why is this so? Why aren't you allowing me to meet people? Why aren't you allowing me to help people or to give me those outreach opportunities? Whatever your mission is. But friends... Sometimes that dry time is the pruning. It's the time when we're shriveling a little. I was in Pakistan a few years ago and I met Ahmed. Ahmed is a man probably of uh, five, ten years younger than me. 
and he told me how on a particular day he went to the local markets and he said, I was walking along looking at all the stalls because I had nothing else to do in Karachi. And he said, as I came to one stall, I noticed up on the wall of this little market stall a picture of a man hanging on a cross. And he said, I looked at it and I said to the stall holder, what did that man do that he was killed like that? The stall holder was obviously a Christian man and it's natural for them to be very, very careful and cautious in Pakistan because for evangelizing, for proselytizing, you can be arrested and thrown into jail without any trial. The stall holder said to Ahmed, so Ahmed tells me, uh, that's Jesus, that's the God of the Christians. He was killed on the cross as a sacrifice for Christians. And he handed Ahmed what we would call a tract. It was just a very small piece of paper and he took that piece of paper and went his way. Later in the afternoon, he said, I was sitting reading that piece of paper and it was like something picked me up and took me back to that stall. And here again, I'm in the market and I'm saying to the man, who, who really is that man? Tell me more about him. And the stall holder reached under the counter and took out a small copy of the Word of God produced by the Gideons International. No one knows how it got into that stall. We have no knowledge of a member of the Gideons International in Pakistan who holds a little stall in that market. But somehow a copy of God's word found its way to be the seed planted in harvest. And through that, Ahmed now is being faced with the scriptures. He took it home to his village near Sako in central Pakistan and started reading. And he became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He started to attend a local church. And his mum and dad found out. They took him outside their little village and they stoned him and left him by the side of the road thinking he was dead. Someone came along. Ahmed still had a pulse. They picked him up and took him to the local hospital. A doctor there by the name of Dr. Sadiq started working on him and rejuvenated him. And if you could see the picture that I have of Ahmed today, you would see that he's disfigured on one side and a hearing aid in the other side of his head from the injuries he sustained. But Dr. Sadiq kept working with him, gave him a job eventually in the 